I sort of feel like um, I should have this musical talent because, you know, I really love the music, the intro. I love to sing, but really, and dance. But my singing is into the in the car only. And my husband tells me I dance like Elaine. So, um, <laughs> well, is he still invited uh, into the house or he is, he is, you know, um, you would probably agree with him if you saw me dance anyway. Hey, 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 everyone. Know. Maybe we my... should spend our time doing that. We could do that. Let's we could spend do this some, time some dancing with you here. dancing. Yeah. Okay. Like that. And you, you're going to sing. You're going to do a little karaoke? Yes. No. Okay. Well, let's open this up then. Hey, everyone. I am Christine George, and uh, this is the No Like Trust live cast slash podcast. I'm super excited for our guest today. Shelly Zavitz is in the house. Woo! Woo! What? Yeah, yeah, that's her. <laughs> um, She's awesome. She's full of dad jokes. I'm so excited for you guys to meet her. Um, so just a little background. Uh, Shelly's a successful realtor in Portland, Oregon. Uh, she's also the author of the best-selling book, Your First 365 Days in Real Estate, and the founder of New Agent 365 and the new learning platform, On Track Agent. Um, you might say Shelly learned how to do real estate the hard way possibly. Uh, she got her license and learned as she went along. She believed there was a better way. Uh, there's a better way. So she created training systems, tools to help every new agent succeed without all the hardship. So super excited to have Shelly because in this episode, we're going to talk about the biggest mistakes she made as a new agent <laughs> and how she helps real estate agent professionals grow and become more profitable. Bam. Welcome. Thank you. That was very nice. Only 30% of that is true. <laughs> Just kidding. She's the lying. struggle of that being was... a new agent was that's a hundred percent true, but you know, but look where you are today. Me. Yeah. We're so excited. How did that happen? Yeah. Uh, so excited. All right. So we're just going to dig right in. I would love for you just to start by letting us know how you got into the business and just sort of set the stage for us. Well, um, I started in, I started my business experience in Canada, in Vancouver, BC. I was working in broadcasting for 15 years. And then um, at the same time, I was really early in life. I bought my first place with a partner. We started, you know, um, purchasing property and it was kind of like a second love next to writing, you know, cause I wrote in radio and I was like, um, probably the first time that I really saw what real estate can do for a person financially, because I, I have very humble upbringing. You know, my family isn't like a bunch of real estate agents with a ton of money. Like it, that wasn't the case. So um, when I first purchased real estate and then sold the first couple, I was like, wow, you can make a lot of money with not a lot of money in, you know, unlike the stock market where to purchase a stock, it costs money, right? You could leverage your dollar. So that was my first introduction to it. And then when I left radio, I came down to Portland, Oregon. I kind of didn't want to do it anymore. Kept, right. I was reaching this spot where I was like, well, this is probably as far as I want to go here. And I was thinking about what else I could do. And I was like, well, I really like real estate. And I did what every single new agent does. I was like, well, I'll just get my license and I'll start selling real estate because it's so simple. And I obviously know how to do it. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so wrong. Yeah. So when I moved to Portland, I knew four people and two of them were in the medical field. One was an engineer and one was a genetic counselor. And I was like, okay, so who am I going to serve exactly? Because <laughs> I don't know anybody. Got my license and I was thinking, well, I need a I need a goal. So I chose the uh, obvious way to motivate myself. And that was to want to be rookie of the year in my company. And I was like, yeah, I know four people. It's going to be a no brainer. I had launched radio stations. I have built something from scratch a million times. No problem. Not the case is not that is not how that happened. And um, 
I ended up writing a book about it because I missed a goal and I was pretty annoyed with myself. I was like, what could I have done differently that would have landed me? Cause I just, it was so close, you know, I almost was there. And then I ended up, you know, writing a book about it. And that was how your first 365 days rolled around. And I thought it would be just me and my mother that would read that. But I had some push from my coach, Lene Forbes, because she read the manuscript and she's like, this is hilarious. It's not a training book, friends. I, I'm not a trainer. It was more just like, this is what it's actually like to start a business in real estate. Because I found that a lot of the people that I first met, they wanted to tell me how much money I could make. And, you know, this, the grass is always greener, all these amazing things that would happen to me if I became a real estate agent and paid the fees to them and did the things. And that wasn't the case. <laughs> that wasn't the case. And go ahead. You had a question. No, no go ahead. Keep going. And I think that um, my goal with that book was to show people like me <laughs> before I arrived into the industry, what it actually is like and how serious it is and what a financial risk it actually is. And so- What is it actually like? What is it actually like? It is the most work that you can imagine. It is it is meeting your comfort line consistently and having to cross it in the name of being successful and choosing success and the and your want for the reason that you got it into it in the first place and it, hopefully it's not money because that's not going to push you past that line and the and and having the self assessment i would say my my first book was 100% about self assessment it was like why did I stop myself? Because the only reason that I didn't meet that goal is because of me. And it's real easy to look out and blame everybody else or that it didn't have a sphere. Or... No, no. In November, I lost heart for it. I got tired and I didn't do the work. And that's the reason why I didn't ah. get it. Period. The end. And to the other thing that I wanted to tell new agents with that book was everybody wants to talk about this, this scoreboard, you know, how many units they do, how much money they're making. And I did that. And it led me down this really uncomfortable path of uh, unworthiness. When really Ooh. I had helped 11 families do something that I was able to do at a young age and be financially successful. So where, why is that not valuable? But I couldn't see it, you know, because I was like scoreboard and so and so's doing this, and I'm not making enough money, and you know, all the all those things. Yeah. And the for anybody who's watching that might not know this, only two of ten real estate agents will make it through their launch. And there, we talk about this all the time. It's because we don't look at it like a business. I believe it has a lot to do with the onboarding and intake of agents, but. You know, I won't get on a soapbox about that. I think we could do better as an industry. I mean, that's the reason why I started. All of this stuff is about one thing for me. And it is, so the book, the new agent book was out for about maybe a year and we just sold a ton of copies. Like it was insane how the industry picked it up. And I'm so grateful for anybody who had supported that because the mission was pure. We were trying to give back to, you know, the agents and what it comes down to. And the reason why I'm still motivated to do things is because of the amount of agents that wrote me letters, Instagram DMs, Facebook messages, and they were started telling me their stories. And I think when you write a really vulnerable book, like the way that I did, it just leads mm -hmm. to, I think she would be willing to hear me too. You know, it was that. And so there was, they understood that I have an empathy for them and I still do. Like I, it's not easy. And a lot of the stories came down to when I boil them down to the, you know, the biggest problem that I hear is real estate agents that are new that, you know, take the leap and don't, ha they're not tasked with all the, or armed with all the tools and information that they need to launch a business. They were going bankrupt. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the destitute that I was hearing of like, it wasn't just, I didn't make it. I'm going to go back to my day job. Cause that's what we, we throw them away like that. I hear people talk yeah. about it like that. What it really is, is I have made a 
impossible mark on the future of my family's finances. I am so broke. I am so in debt because of the fees structure of our industry. I may never get out. And I heard enough of those stories and I I had to do something about that. So. Well, let me ask you a question as it relates to that, because, you know, I, I agree with you 100% that agents coming in, into the business, they're, they don't have the right mentors. They don't have the right tools. They don't have the right systems, processes, whatever they possibly need to be successful. And yet there's so much out there, Shelly, right? There's, I mean, but it's all click funnel. It's all. Well, that's the thing, right? So that's, I guess my question to you is how do you narrow it down to, and I guess this really goes to, you know, new agent 365, and maybe this is a good segue to new, new agent 365. I mean, how do you, how do you narrow it down? There's so much out there, so much noise. How do you get an agent focused, super focused and give them everything that they need to be successful in the beginning? How do you, how do you, how do you get that? How do you break through that noise and break it down for them? That's a loaded question. I know uh, we need about three hours for that. The The simplest answer I would say is when I was, so first of all, new agent is about 13 other people. Um, it is not just me. It was a group of us that came together with the sole objective to try and help new agents understand exactly what they're getting into. So just to put that out to everybody, this is not a Shelly Zavitz show. This is a, you know, all, if you go on newagent365.com, you can see all the people that participated and put their heart and soul into this. So please go, we have like little links that you can listen to their training. They are remarkable people and I'm so grateful. But when I was building the program in the content way, so remember that my background is in radio. So building shows, uh, building programming, you know, that was that was something that I helped with and I was passionate about. So it was really I have a unique skill set to be able to make these things because of all of that you know, 15 years of experience. So when I was looking at the new agent situation and my own experience, because remember I had, I had, was in the trench, trenches with them. Like it doesn't matter what market you in. Yes. Our paperwork is different. How we do things is different. The MLSs are all different, but the experience is, and I can say concretely now based on the feedback on that book, everybody's having the same problems. And they're having the same problems in the same spots. So I was taking notes, you know, and then what I did was I broke it down into a, a way that it wouldn't overlap. Have you ever been to a conference and you're like, wow, all these speakers and you make all these notes and you can do all these things. And then when you get home, you do none of them. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm just speaking to, of myself because no, no. <laughs> I, I do that. No. In radio, we would call that information overload. And when I wrote commercials, I would make sure that I only told one thing at a time to the audience so that they were motivated to do a thing, right? That's just the rule of advertising. So I was like, well, what if I applied that to training and I simplified it into just, I'm going to give you one thing to think about and I'm going to tell you how to do that, right? And then I'm going to go out with Stephanie Chumbly, um, help me build that program. Thank you so much if you're watching. Um, we went out and we tried to find the person that could best train that because I'm, I definitely could not do it. I don't have the skill set, but there are niche trainers out there that just train on that one thing to make you perfect at it. Like, it's really easy to find a coach that's like, you know, these are all the things you should be doing. But what if you had like one person that that's their bread and butter, they know they have studied it. It's what they live and breathe. So we went, went out and found those people. And then we built the program based on building blocks. So we, originally we called it a blueprint, but I would say it's more building blocks. You can't, you can't do this until you do this and then this, mm -hmm. and then this. So then the, the goal was to fight the overwhelm and then also give them actionable things like, yes, this is more than theory. I mean, the relationship sales system 
was built in 1967. Like what we do, mm -hmm. the handwritten notes, all those things that was done in radio too, because mm -hmm. it's, that's a classic thing. So, and it's taught everywhere. So we didn't need to do that. You can find that somewhere else. Right. And with a little bit of research in 1967, I'm sure you meet the original person that made that. So I didn't want to beat a dead horse. I mean, it's, it's, they could find that. And even probably in their brokerages, they could find that. Yeah. Which then leads me to the brokerage thing. Um, for it, for a new agent to be successful, uh, I talked a lot with Stephanie about this too, was how do we make it so that um, it is an asset for brokerages so that they could put their right. culture on top so that we could just like give the foundation and then whatever is the brand promise after that from Coldwell Banker, who we worked a lot with and, and um, Tiffany McQuaid, like, how do you, how do you leave space for the brokerage to say, I want you to shine with our brand promise. Right. And we didn't want to get in the way of that. So we made, we made sure we didn't, you know, here, here's the steps to, to launch your business properly big, really looking at finances too, because, you know, yeah, I mean, that's one of the main reasons why we were building it was like, these guys are going broke, like not even, yeah, yeah destitute. So I was really excited um, to launch that and just to see how everyone would respond to it. Because the, the big question mark was if you give, there's a lot of programs out there where it's like, take this system and put it in your business. And what we were trying to do is leave space for the agent to decide who they wanted to be in this marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be a rainmaker? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be an assistant? Both both are needed in our industry, right? So how, how do we give you the tools to be able to process that? I'm talking a lot. Do you have any questions? Yeah, yet? <laughs> yeah I totally do. Um, well, first of all, I... I I love that because I mean, that's a lot of what Carrie and I do at Post and Beam and what, not even what we do, but what we believe in, which is, you know, building your personal brand. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that comes first because totally. ultimately people are working with you, the agent, not, not with the brokerage, right? Even though they are. Yeah. Let's be honest. It's all about the service that the agent provides to the client. It, but the brokerage gives the credibility, right? But 100%. you can't just show up with credibility and say, use me. They have to have a connection right. with what your own brand promise is. What are you bringing to the listing exactly. appointment, right? Go ahead. It, exactly. And I don't feel like as an industry, we teach agents how to do that well. Well, how you does know, Post we, and Beam help with that? Like if you were a new agent, could Post and Beam do something? I mean, if it's really around kind of what we teach and our philosophy around how to actually build that personal brand, which is building relationships ultimately and mm -hmm. building re relationships with people being who you are, not, you know, the mask of the real estate agent or, you know, your whole self, which is... Right you know, your hobbies, your passions, your family, the things that are important to you, you know, the things that you're skilled at, you know, cause you're not right. just a real estate agent, you're a whole person and people need to be able to relate to you. And I think that's the key to building that no like trust with your clients, but that's like a totally different I'm getting off. Track but I have here, a question. Cause... Can I can I follow oh up? Oh my that? god! Hold Who's interviewing I... who you here? Who here? <laughs> can I just ask? <laughs> can I just ask a question? So, yes. um, a lot of uh, of the larger brokerages give away or help offer. Excuse me, offer agents um, like packages, like uh, their buyer books, like what they would present or leave behind um, the listing yes. packets, things like that. Do you think that that should be modified for each yes. agent? Can you 100%. just explain yeah. that real quick? Well, I, yes. Why is because, that important? Well, it's important, I think, for an agent to understand and be able to speak about, you know, what their tactical offerings are. And oftentimes mm -hmm. a lot of that comes from the brokerage, right? Right. But to your earlier point, it doesn't really matter what those things are if the people you're working with don't trust you 
don't feel a connection with you. So that has to come first, you know, and that comes, we're working with a client right now who's actually, she is all her whole philosophy and she will tell you the reason for her success is because of her listening skills that have Mm. been honed over time. And she will tell you that, you know, she will, she will go to a listening appointment with nothing but her questions and her mindset of curiosity. And at the end of that listing appointment, she'll get the listing because people feel like they've been heard, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. And how important is that? Super, yeah. super important. Um, so, so anyway, like that, so does that end up in her, like the, the material that she makes or is that part of her brand promise? Would you say? Her brand or... promise is that she's going to hear you. Mm-hmm. Do, you know, uh, completely hear you and be able to deliver on, you know, what your goals are and help you find solutions for any roadblocks that come up along the way. Nice. It's as simple mm. as that, right? Yeah. So go back to the yeah, building okay. block. Mm. Yeah. So talk about what those, like at the very high level, like what are those building blocks within New Agent 365? Okay. So they do 12 weeks and at each, at the end of each week, they have to finish a mission is what we call it. And there's a trainer on each week because I'm asking these guys to do this for free. So I was like, how can I not tax them out completely? And the other thing we wanted to do is give high level visual and audio presentation. Like we're not just going to do a bunch of webinars. You know, I wanted it to feel exciting for a new agent because they are nervous, but they're excited. So we start out with our first week. It's the psychology of success. Mike Rorig teaches that. And he has a, he's a working real estate agent and he has a background in psychology. And we talk about goal setting, all the obvious stuff, but we also talk about studies and case studies of the brain getting in the way of you being successful because of how mm-hmm. it's wired and the things that, and ways, tricks that he gives to get past those things. It's, a, he's a genius. Like some of the stuff that guy comes up with micro rig folks. Yeah. Next up is, okay. uh, uh, Eleni Summer Shields. She's the chief operating officer at wise agent. And we get into CRMs immediately because we can't do anything else until we're able to have a history about our relationships. So um, we learn how to put everybody in, who needs to go in. The obvious questions that we always talk about is, is it everybody in my phone? Is it just some people? We answer all those questions, how to tag them, how to follow up, when you should be in the notes, stuff like that. Uh, Week three is Deborah Trapin, who teaches, I think we all know her. If you're watching, um, <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> um, she teaches uh, <laughs> defining your niche. And one of the most important things for a new agent to know is that you have limited time, you have limited money. We mm-hmm. have to narrow it down because if we don't, you're just kind of like flailing. And that is not a way to run a business, period. And no. Deborah is the only person that should teach that. She was fabulous. And uh, I thank her again for doing that. Week four is uh, Lori Weston Davis. We get into mentorships, into groups. Who do you need to surround yourself with? There's uh, sayings all over the place that you're only as good as your next five severe, whatever. I botched that, mm-hmm. but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yep, I hear you. <laughs> Who you surround yourself <laughs> with is so important. And what new agents tend to do is they silo, right? They'll be like, I have my managing broker, designated broker, whatever. And then I'm afraid to ask questions because I feel like I should know. So I just silo myself. And that is that will leave you to a spot of not only loneliness, because we have a lonely job, right? But mm-hmm. also if you are not exposed to different ideas or people who are very active in the market, you can't be exposed to what the market's doing today because the market's a living, breathing thing. So in week four, we we meet all those people. They're tasked to like basically hire in those positions, not paid. One of them is a coach, but not like the traditional cro- coach. Uh, week five, we get into uh, working with buyers and Sabri- Sabrina Brown teaches that. And she's, she's absolutely fabulous. We talk about, um, intakes. We talk about not meeting people in a house. 
we talk about safety because nobody wants to talk about that. Actually, that's true. Tracy Hawkins. Yeah. She talks about it. I, I'm actually bringing her on soon. I'm super excited. Um, nice. We talk about taking control of the process immediately. So you're not running around, you know, because if you spend a lot of time running around, you're not making any money, period. The end. Uh, week seven is with Val Thorpe. Um, by the way, most of the people are active real estate agents in New Agent. Uh, she has been a phenomenal mentor to me. So I brought her on to teach uh, working with sellers. And what we do is we learn about when you're walking into the listing appointment, what should you have? What should you leave behind? All of those things. Um, how to do comps, stuff like that. Uh, week seven is uh, where's my money? And it's with Tammy Wittron. She tells a very unique story about how she crawled out of $650,000 worth of debt. Wow. And she teaches you how to also do that if you are in debt. She teaches you what systems to do when you get a check, how the proper flow should mm -hmm. go through. And she is the only person that I felt should teach it because she was on her knees with it and had to stand up. And I have a lot of respect for anybody who does that, period. Um, so Tammy, if you're watching, good job. Uh, seven, eight is Dale Chumbly, my really good friend. Love this guy. He does revving your referral engines. How do you attract people to you? How do you use this? How do you use social media? Uh, how do you make sure that you're constantly being the, the champion in your community? Because really our businesses and prospecting is about being a champion in your community. I know there's a lot of lead generation and things that you can buy that are really easy, but if you put in the work of really like becoming the glue to a whole network of people, you're going to do well, period, the end. Um, week nine is with Joseph Maysaisai. He teaches prospecting, which is business to business. How can you have other business owners in your community um, build those relationships so that you refer to each other? and be like build strong businesses together because if because if you grow they grow you know mm -hmm. uh 10 is with marguerite martin she does we do basic business planning which is essentially boiling it down to doing the math of how much taxes you're going to pay we kind of two by four them straight across the face with okay you had a w2 that made you sixty thousand dollars take home in this world you make need to make 132 that means that in your market you have to sell 14 houses what activities do you need to do today to sell 14 houses this year to make your survival number it's a tough training it's a lot of numbers but we get through it 11 is with Bill Risser. Uh, he teaches loving your partners. I am a strong believer that you are only as good as your extensions. And the if you vet your partnerships, like your lender, not that your lender should give you any kind of leads or anything. That's, I don't, you are the person that fishes. But if they have the same um, perspective of, of the business and same brand promise and client focus experience, Anytime that your client leaves you to be with those people, it feels like they're still in your sphere because your review, the person that's going to write about you is going to be including that experience outside of you in your review. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be yep. perfect. Mm -hmm. So vet your people. We do that in 11, 12 is, um, the art of giving. And we put together the, uh, marketing playbook. You don't schedule it. You don't do it. So. Uh, Tracy Hicks is the owner of All Things Real Estate Store, and she used to be a real estate agent, still owns a brokerage, but started the store to, you know, I think in the in, at first it was about just providing products for us. Like, mm -hmm. I think it started with the home buyer journal or something that she made. I think that's the story. Anyway, she trains on on how to do the activity. So in 10 Week 10, we learned I need 14 houses. What activities do I have to do daily, monthly, weekly, annually? What events should I do that all talk to the niche in week three? And we just tie it all together, which is the reason why it's in that in that sequence. And it's really important yeah. to me that when they leave, they know who they serve, why they serve. And when they meet that uncomfortable line, they can just trot right past because they have the confidence yeah. to be able to do it. That took a long oh time to get God, to. I love it. So that is, that's incredible. 
really it is how many people have gone through the training um we're almost at 600 now that's amazing yeah it's hard you know because not every brokerage wants to let go of their you know their agent into our space but the ones that do i mean our success rate is super high and the i could tell you i don't have the stats in front of me but the rookie of the years that reported back to us like it's it's most of them if you finish you will do well the end yeah and you got to just do the work you got to really do the work though. and we That's threaten that thing. we threaten that the first <laughs> video is two of 10 of you will not finish two of 10 of you will not make it in the business and i just tell them right away so if you want your money back yeah. let me know <laughs> Well, you know, I love what you said in the beginning too. Like it, the reason why you didn't make your goal that first year was completely because of, of you and your, your actions, right? Absolutely. You're, and I, I see it with agents. They, they, they become baffled by, you know, why they didn't make their number, why things didn't work out the way they had hoped. And at the end of the day, it's, all about the activities that they did day in and day out over time that are going to get them where they want to go. So how do people sign up for new agent 365? If you want to do the missions, you would go to newagent 365.com and choose tier two. We also, um, since then, it's funny because I only make things because people ask me for it. So when we first launched New Agent, um, there was a lot of people that were like, well, I don't have my license just yet. I'm still doing it. I'm going to take the test. And I was, and they said, should I take it? I'm like, yeah, I, th- I really think that you should have the test first, but there's these other things that you should be doing. So we wrote the Kickstarter manual, which is seven levels that takes you through, you know, do you, can you do the job? Um, what should you talk to your spouse about? Do you have the finances to launch a business? And then we kind of like quietly and softly tell them that they need a budget because, you know, they won't listen if it's not soft. Uh, Then we analyze their abilities. So what are the seven hats of an entrepreneur? And do do you have the skill set to do that? And then we look at what are the first 30 days activities for 60 days of your business. And if you're not thinking about that, don't quit your job yet. And then they do a, do you remember the old Cosmo things where it's like, does he like me? And it was like, you answer all the questions. And if you're between yeah. zero and 10, you're here. So we did one of those, <laughs> but it's, it's an assessment of the sphere. So mm-hmm. if, if you don't have anybody to call, it's not, you're not ready yet. And I wish I had that for myself. You know, I didn't have the database. So then the first, you know, three months of my real estate career was about, it wasn't never about transactions. It was like, I need to talk to 10 people today because I don't have anybody to call. And that was the first. So I I felt behind to start with, but you know, get over it. We got there. Wow. I I love that. Like, I don't think, I don't think there's anybody doing that. This whole Kickstarter thing. I, yeah. I mean, that's brilliant. That's, it's just, it's really an assessment. It's like a deep dive assessment of whether you're ready for the business or not. And And no one can tell you, you have to look yourself. And like in the spousal um, questionnaire, it's like, who's going to take care of the kids? Yeah. These are, this is the, walk the dog. This is the hours you can expect. Cause yeah. if we set expectations really early, if they walk through this and we set it really early, they can decide yeah. if this isn't for them before yeah. they tell me in 18 months that they're destitute. That's the whole goal, right? Yeah. Is to get ahead of that yeah. conversation. So, yes, that's huge. That is huge. It's just getting it I out mean, there and into their hands, uh, tough, you know? Yeah, because we we offer a new agent at it's 179 bucks because we have to mail out all their material and stuff, but it's mm-hmm. it's not meant to be profitable, and we put it together based on the finances of the book sales and you know I I just That's wanted awesome. to give it back to them because excuse me we all wanted to get give it back to them. And in a way that was, you know, this, we're not trying to talk you into being 
you being my coach or this longevity of a relationship. Yeah. If you want to stay awesome, if you don't awesome, but please leave with this information because I don't want you to call me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it. I'm done sleeping. I can't sleep no more. Anyway. Oh, that's great. All right. So let's switch tracks a little bit. Um, you just started uh, on track agent a little less than a year ago, right? Yeah. Um, um, well, the first inception of it agent? was two yeah. years ago, and then okay. we sort of revamped it and launched it again. Um, on track agent is the bigger version of new agent, essentially. It allows yeah. programs like new agent to stream on its platform. So if anybody else is building, I call them series, not courses, because courses yeah. sounds like work. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um, if if an agent could go to a place that was free of click funneling, free of the upsell, free of <clears throat> the add ons that make other programs really expensive and they just needed the answer to their questions when they needed the answer to the questions, how could we do that? That was my first question to in the building process. The second mm -hmm. one was. How could I make it so that it was interesting? Because there was already Udemy. You can go to LinkedIn courses. You could like there's a lot of different places that you could go to to get information about real estate, economics, business planning, you know. But how can you get it so that it's uh, the information is a little bit more pure, I think is what I was after. And so eventually new agent will be hosted by on track agent and it's a stream and learn program or platform. And the other thing that I wanted was, and I, again, I only build when people ask me for stuff. So when we launched the new agent program, we had 12 different people as trainers, they were niche trainers and it brought out other niche trainers to me. And they were like, Hey, can I get in on, on doing this? And I was like, you know, we don't pay, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's free 99. And they were like, no, yeah. I, I just really, <laughs> I just really want to, I want to help. And, and the, and I was like, can I take some meetings with you? So over the next year before launching on track fully, I started taking meetings with them. I'm like, well, what's the problem? Like, why are you not getting market share? Why can't you attract people to the thing that you train on? And, and, and so when I was building on track, I was like, how do I create a space for them to keep control of their content, keep control of their copyright? and just let us stream it for them. So as a license and that they would get paid for it because I'm not interested in taking anybody's money, right? I don't know what's wrong with me, but that's just how it is. Money's never been a motivator <laughs> for me. <laughs> so everyone's like, you know, how are you gonna monetize it? Yeah, we'll get there. First, let's solve the problem. Yeah. So yeah. the idea is that each trainer who wants to be a part of it and you have to be approved and you, you, know, you have to be legit, that you can put your videos on and you get a store in the background and, and you can set your prices. You can change when things are available and when they're not, and we will stream it for you and spend our marketing dollars, attracting people to a nucleus of several different people that could help a real estate agent learn their craft better. And, and it's, I'm a big fan of not the plug and play thing because that I have learned through my time in radio, actually, that when you start to take on somebody else's ideas that aren't your own, it robs you of, of your passion and your own purpose. It takes, it takes, it snaps it just a little bit. It's not like you can't be totally successful in those programs. They're awesome. And they're, you know, but sometimes you have to do the inside work first. And so for on track agent, I was, it's for the folks that wanted that. And it's not for everybody. It, there, you know, there is a place for every single person's market and every single product and on track agent just has its own little spot. I think. Absolutely. I love it. I love so it. So if you are uh, a trainer and you want to be a part of it, please reach out. I'd love to hear from you because how I can promote you? you and elevate you. I will. Um, any way you want. Uh, you can call me. Uh, DMs are good. Email at Shelly at Shelly's Um, 
Yeah. Any, I, I'm everywhere. You'll find me. I'm a real estate agent. My phone number is everywhere. <laughs> it is. So uh, just so, ask the so telemarketers. The obvious, the obvious next question is how do you do it all? Fascinating question. Don't know yet. Are you still selling real estate? Yeah. Yeah. I sold 18 million last year. Volume. I have um, wonderful people around me. I have a transaction coordinator who I talk to at 8 a.m. every day. And she basically is the boss. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we work really well together. And um, for new agent, I have a support system, like some admin folks that, you know, I can lean on and they are there for me. And like, I, there's no way that I can do this by myself. On track agent, um, I have had so much support mentorship. Um, it, it is phenomenal how many people have, they were already holding the torch and they were like, she's a loud mouth. And then just, we all came together. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, uh, they just, it, I, I do it all because of other people, I think is the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a village. And I don't have, listen, I don't have kids. So that's a full-time job right there. <laughs> so this is my full-time kid. Yeah. yeah. You got three babies. <laughs> Three babies, Three babies just poop and they yeah. ain't eating. Hopefully they grow up <laughs> soon because it's getting annoying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So if you could, you know, if you could wrap it up in one answer, what would you say is the secret to becoming a successful agent after giving us all that amazing information? Mm hmm. I would say, ask the follow-up question. Ask the follow-up question when you are choosing a brokerage. Ask a, the following up question if you're choosing a team. Ask the follow-up question when you're sitting in front of your client. Go one deeper, just to make sure that you have all the information that you need. And mm -hmm. be careful that the promise isn't true because if it's if it's too easy it's probably not a thing you know our industry yeah. is tough and being an entrepreneur even if you work for a team is not easy learn to fish yourself because if you become self-sustainable you know the sky's the limit you can do whatever you want isn't that amazing yeah it is and I'm so yeah. grateful that I'm here it took a long time but I'm very, very grateful. And basically, you know, everybody who put a stepping stone in front of me is the reason why. What? You make me cry. Well, it's true. That was, you, you, you can't get anywhere without, without support. You, can't. you know, you can't, mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. You know, one mm -hmm. of our biggest supporters is on right now in Ms. Deborah Trapin. She's watching us right now. Is she? Mm -hmm. what's up Deborah? big hug girl thank you for everything i love you very grateful right i i think she's the reason for so many of us isn't it true mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. like i wouldn't in be so many different her. facets oh you know thank you oh we love you Deborah. i know she doesn't like deb so i don't like to say deb Deborah. She has a blog now too, which is, have you seen mm. her blog? Divine Soul. No. Is it Divine Soul Fire? And that's right off the top of my head. It's probably wrong. Can we put the link in this thing? So yes, let's put the you link. You like how it came with a dance? <laughs> yes. You said. <laughs> we love you too. <laughs> hey, you, you said you wanted me to dance. <laughs> I'll dance with someone. All right. This went All off right. the rails. <laughs> Before we wrap, I want you to finish this sentence. No like trust is. No like trust is the backbone of every single thing that matters. I, th I think that um, 
if you don't, if you're missing even one of those, you can't have a valuable relationship with somebody that is respectful and people do business with people they respect. Mm -hmm. So if you're kind of sailing in off of one of those, you got to work on the other two, you know, you can be the most trustworthy person in the world and nobody knows who you are. It's not going to be helpful, (laughs) especially in this business. You got to go talk to people. Anyway, that's beautiful. Um, Shelly, tell us one more time, where can people find you? Um, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Shelly at Shelly or yeah, Shelly at Shelly'sAvis.com. If you want to email, I have a website, Shelly's Avis, but my website, you'll just see like real estate stuff. Honestly, okay. if you just put in my name, it will, something will show up that you can DM me and I try to check them. So if you need me, I'll be awesome. around. Yeah. Thanks for being with us today. We so appreciate your time. I am grateful. Thank you for having me. We're grateful for you. And we're grateful for your dad jokes. Oh, did you hear about the restaurant on the moon? (laughs) It's great food. No atmosphere. (laughs) Ah, But on boom. And on that. We should have started off with that. Thank you. We should have. Thanks. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. This has been amazing. And Deborah says she doesn't mind Deb. It's Debbie that she doesn't like. Okay. Copy that. It. My brain. Honestly, yes. Deborah is the only way for me. Okay. Yes. That's how it is. Um, <laughs> all right, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Shelly, thank you so much. And uh, if thank you, you love again. our podcast, please share it with your friends and give us a great review. Have a great day, everyone. Mm-hmm.